Yeah, so <coughs> let's get started. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Cisco Fauli. Um, I am the QA engineer at the Document Foundation. Um, I started at, yeah, two years ago in this position. And um, in today's talk, I'm going to talk uh, about, well, uh, how to improve LibreOffice quality together. And, well, basically, it's a summary of what happened in 2018 and, yeah, what's for the near future in 2019. So, first, uh, I'm going to talk about what happened in Baxilla, the, the bug tracker we use. Then, I'm going to talk about uh, the automation of things we are um, doing in QA or how we can find ways to automate things. Then i um, going to talk about QA events in 2018 and then uh, in the middle of 2018 we created a blog about QA so I'm going to slightly talk about that and what, well, like what we are using it for and yeah basically that's that's it so <clears throat> let's start talking about what happened in Baxilla last year so yeah that's uh, uh, well we got around 7500 reports uh, yeah in, in in the whole year by 3,000, well, to, like 3,100 people. 88% uh, of those uh, bugs were, or this, those reports were bugs, and then 11.5 uh, were enhancements. And yeah, the, we have, uh, there is a pointer, I think. Oh, no? Okay. So, um, in average, we have, uh, 550 uh, reports every month and then in October we got around 700 reports and well the the reason is that um, well we got um, 6.1.3 report uh, released about that time so I think that's a uh, well, when this release becomes still, and then we got more, more people reporting issues. Then, <clears throat> well, we got uh, almost uh, 6,900 6, uh, reports closed by uh, 520 people. Um, this is uh, slightly uh, lower than the number of reports we get open. But uh, anyway, I think it's um, quite impressive to see so many bugs reports uh, in a year. So in average, it's around, well, it's slightly lower than uh, six, 600 reports every month. And then we also have uh, October as the, the, the month where more reports were closed. So yeah, basically, when we get more reports, normally, yeah, some of them are duplicates or not an issue, so they, they get close as well. <clears throat> then, uh, well, on this chart, we see that uh, of those uh, 6,900 bugs closed, so almost 32% uh, of them were closed as a fix, so there is a commit fixing them. Uh, then, 20, like 24 percent of them were uh, duplicates bugs, so were triaged by QA. Uh, around 18 percent were work for me, which means those bugs were, uh, well, there were triaged in the past, and then at some point they got fixed. Um, then someone retested them, and they they were no longer reproducible, but uh, we don't know the, the, the patch or the commit fixing them, so we just close as works for me. And then 
we have around 12% of them which uh, were, were close as insufficient data because uh, we requested more info from the reported, but then we didn't, got, we didn't have any, any info back. <clears throat> then, well, uh, normally when a bug is reported, uh, it goes to unconfirmed status. Uh, so then from that point on, it's when QA jumps in and basically triage it and decided to move it to new or duplicate or whatever status it needs to go. So the important thing is that the lower number we have of unconfirmed bugs, the better because uh, otherwise if this charge is going up all the time, it means that, uh, well, that we are not uh, triaging those bugs in time, so yeah, it's not that, so if we don't triage them, then it's gonna take longer to, to fix them. So yeah, it's always a struggle to, to put this number back. Like in March, we put it to 300, then it went up to 500, then back again to 350. So then it goes up and it's always this, like this kind of uh, trend. But yeah, the, at least the, the idea is that um, yeah, we, we keep on doing it so it's not going all the time up. Then, well, this is an uh, interesting one. So yeah, we see that over one year, uh, the number of regressions went from uh, 850 to uh, yeah, more than 1,000. So we have in, in April or May more or less, there was a drop there. Uh, I took a look at in Baxilla and well, there was this huge change uh, from Armin about AW8, uh, O80, so then like many regressions were introduced and then at some point uh, he fixed all of them so we had a drop but yeah it's um, it's uh, yeah it's something to take into account because then I while I was preparing the slides I did the same slide I, 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 I created the same chart for the previous year from for uh, from 2017 and it was the same trend like we get more and more regressions so those is those are the open regressions so yeah i i, um, I understand that uh like many uh, people report bugs at some point we we find that there are regressions because they do they didn't work in the they, they used to work in the past but yeah, it's something to, to take into account. So looking at this chart, I thought, okay, we should analyze like when uh, we have, like when those, those regressions were introduced. So yeah, we see that in 5.1, in 4.1, sorry, we had like, we still have uh, like 100 open and the same for, yeah, well, in 6.1, it's kind of expected because it's, um, well, it's uh, still a, a, a production release, so it's not end of life. <clears throat> so we are still working on that on that uh, release as well, same as 6.2. But yeah, as, like looking at this, uh, this chart, I can say that, well, half of them were from four times or three times, so like three, the, the, the three uh, releases, major releases or four major releases. So then those uh, regressions seems that, uh, well, it, it, they were introduced so, uh, so long time ago that, well, it's now difficult to, to get someone to look at them. It's not like if you introduce a regression, then it's like two months, uh, all then it's easier to fix it but then yeah we, we, we are carrying all these regressions from the past 
So yeah, it's difficult to, to get someone to, to, to fix them. Then um, highest priority bugs from that time, from, from last year. So this, uh, uh, this peak here, it matches also when this uh, work, where the refactor from Armin was done, so then many crashes and many uh, regressions were, were found. So then when uh, he fixed them, then we got uh, back to where we were, and now where we, we are kind of uh, stable here. And then here with uh, high priority bugs, uh, well, it's kind of uh, yeah, steady as well. And then that peak there, it's uh, another uh, refactor from Armin. <laughs> that yeah, there were many uh, and yeah, many problems introduced it, and then it got back to to normal. Yeah, so <clears throat> that was it for Baxilla. Um, well, regarding automation. So two years ago, I talked about this uh, script uh, we are using now. So basically, what we do is, uh, well, we, we have a, a pool of documents. And what we do is to import them in uh, LibreOffice. Then we export them to different formats like uh, doc, docx, then RTF. Then we open those documents, those exported documents to in, in Word or in PowerPoint, or, yeah, and then we create a PDF. So then we have uh, the reference from um, Word, and then the, the PDF created from LibreOffice, and then round, round trip it in, in, uh, in Word. So we can, well, it's, it's way, it, it, it works by finding differences in those PDF. So then we can, uh, yeah, we, I, I use it to, to find regressions. And uh, yeah, so last year we found uh, 62 bugs uh, with this tool. So the, the, yeah, the good news is that 70% uh, of them are already fixed. Uh, it seems uh, CIB and Nietzsche team, or I don't know how you pronounce it, they are using this tool as well. So uh, right now, like in the TDF uh, infrastructure, we use it to test writer, calc, and impress. So those are the, the formats we, we test nowadays. And in writer, we use uh, a pool of uh, 4,000 files. In calc, 5,500 uh, 5, uh, 500, uh, files. And then in impress, uh, 2,400 files. So. Um, those are random files downloaded from different bug trackers. So uh, with using a, a huge number of documents allows us to find um, really corner cases, uh, like really strange or obscure documents that, well, like for normal f features, uh, we have already these cases, but uh, using this tool allows us to find um, well, problems that otherwise we couldn't find. Yeah. So this is an example. Here um, on the left, you have the reference. And on the right, you, you have the document exported from LibreOffice. So you see that um, where well, some characters are missing. So yeah, that, that was. Um, this way, we just find it uh, right away that something's wrong here. Then we just bisect it and say, OK, this commit produces this, this regression. So then it's uh, faster, yeah. Uh, same here. So this is from LibreOffice. So the background was uh, white, while it should be transparent. Or the same here, we have the bullet, uh, the bullets should be one like specific size. And in there, they were much smaller. Then uh, we also use some scripts to 
track what's going on in Baxilla. Uh, yeah, as, 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 as I said before, with, we get more than 5,000 um, reports every year. Uh, you just need to create an account. It's at, as easy as uh, having an email and uh, um, password. You, you can edit everything you want. We don't restrict what uh, users can do in Baxilla. So it's, uh, yeah, we have this philosophy of uh, anything can be, like anyone can edit anything. So, well, the downside of that is that, uh, well, we need uh, to check what, that things are done in the, in the right way. So in order to do that, I use this script. So um, it, yeah, like we check 30 different things with this script. Some of, of the ones I, I, I find more interesting is that, okay, this script creates a report that let me know, like, okay, that regression or a crash was just fixed. So then I, I get the list of those uh, regressions and, and, and crashes fixed, so I just go there and verify they are fixed. Or also, an interesting one is that we are encouraging new newcomers to, well, to confirm bugs. But the problem is that if they just confirm the bug, then we don't know if it's a regression or not. So maybe if there, it's a recent regression, but no one checks that, then the, the, the bug remains open forever. So then with these reports, I know that a specific bug was moved to new without confirming uh, whether it's a regression or not. So I just check it, double check it, and then it uh, uh, speeds up the, 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 the process. Um, yeah, and things like that. So my idea for the future is to, because right now I run this script, script locally. Uh, because, um, yeah, I, I, it's something I've been working this year. So my idea is to, now that it's more or less working as expected, uh, to have it uh, published somewhere, like in the wiki or like to have a website for that. So then, uh, like any other contributor can uh, read this report and, and also help on that. Uh, yeah, and I have a talk in the in Tirana's conference about that, so here's the, the link. Um, yeah, this is another thing uh, this script is good for. So when I see um, a, new, a, new, a newcomer is doing things in Baxilla, then I get a notification with this script, and uh, I just send him an, an email like, hey, Tony, so welcoming him and giving uh, this person some uh, pointers and some links, some interesting links. So yeah, last year I, I sent this email to 130 people, and I do the same for all contributors. So uh, yeah, people go and uh, come and go, and so what I do is just like if I see that someone was uh, contributing in the past actively, and then after half a year he's not or this person is not uh, contributing anymore. I just send um, an email saying, hey, we miss you. Uh, like, we would appreciate if you like, can help us uh, any time in the future. So yeah, and I send this email to 150 all contributors. And yeah, sometimes you get nice uh, replies like, oh, I'm, I'm busy now, but whenever I, I get time again, I'll, I'll contribute back again. So yeah, that's. Um, and I, I think that people well they appreciate sometimes not not always but sometimes. Uh, then we have about, uh, we have UI test as well. So we have uh, Snyek or Ral here. So he did a really impressive uh, work last year. He did around two two hundred patches in yeah, 2000, in two thousand eighteen. Well, we are, we also have uh, Marcus Mohan who did this uh, framework. So right now. We have uh, one, 136 tests in Writer, 15 in Impress, 5 in Math, none in Draw, so that's something to work on. And then Calc is uh, really, well, the, the most covered, 264. So that makes uh, 427 tests. So considering this framework was introduced one year and a half ago, 
that's a, a really impressive uh, work and progress here. And this is something I did in the Hackfest the other day. So I found one dialogue which was, well, there was a regression in a dialogue. So then I thought, well, we have a make a screenshot thing that just prints all the dialogues in a PNG files. So I thought, well, maybe we could just compare those screenshots between different builds. So then if we have different, like in this case, well, there might be a false positive, but we could also find uh, regressions uh, much faster this way. So that's something I'm, I'm, I'm doing now. So yeah, let's see if it works. I'll, I'll, I'll have it, uh, yeah, it's a simple script, but uh, I'm gonna have it in a VM, like running, uh, like I pull master, I build it with screenshots and then compare and see if uh, some useful information comes out of it. Then QA events, uh, well, we have for most of the, or normally for alpha one, beta one, and RC one, we organize a bug hunting session. So we had three bug, uh, bug hunting session in 6.1, three other in 6.2. So yeah, the, the, we normally have dedicated sessions where we encourage uh, uh, participants to test some new features or, or to test a, a, a part of, of the project, of the program. So in 6.1, we focus on fiber migration and the image uh, handling refactoring. And then in 6.2, uh, well, we did it uh, for KD5 uh, integration, uh, the notebook bar, and also the fiber migration. Also, there was a Hackfest in, in Taiwan. It was um, organized by um, Franklin, who was here just one hour ago. Uh, also, Chen Xia Sheng, I don't know, and Jeff Huang. So this, this was an interesting event because there were more than, uh, uh, well, around 70 students attending this uh, event, and yeah, it was uh, focused on QA. And also, we had, uh, here we have Muhammad, so he ran two uh, inside uh, hunting sessions in Ankara, if I'm right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And then finally, uh, the blog, so in uh, August, we created a blog for uh, QA. Right now, we, we're using it for announcing pre-releases pre and also to announce, uh, well, to, to publish uh, monthly reports. So uh, in the past, when we had uh, pre-releases, normally, we send an email to the QA list, but that's something that we stopped doing it. So I thought, well, the more we advertise it, the more people is going to download it, and then we're, gonna have, we, we're going to have more people testing it. So then I thought, okay, let's use the, the QA blog, which goes to the planet as well, and then I can also share the link in, in Telegram or whatever channel, and uh, yeah, so, Right now, we announce all pre-releases in the blog. So then, uh, well, what we do is to point them to to the uh, Get Involved page, where they have the, the, the links to download the, the builds. So yeah, I see, like, in this, on, on this chart, you can see that yesterday I announced the final pre-release, or the RC3, uh, from 6.2, uh, which is going to be uh, announced as final next week. So you here, you have um, like an average of uh, 35 people visiting the Get Involved page, but then yesterday, I, as I announced this uh, pre-release, then we jumped to 70 people. So then we have, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, important to announce it because then we get more people uh, testing it. Um, and finally, we have uh, monthly reports. 
that's something I've been kind of, uh, yeah, on the, on the one hand, I, I do it with a script because we have some charts that can be generated with a script. But also, I, I'm going to show you this example. This is from, from last uh, report from December. I still have like two minutes. Ah, uh, five minutes. Okay, but maybe some questions. So, yeah, we have here like uh, the number of reports, triage bugs, and the people doing that, fixed bugs, like list of uh, critical bugs, uh, like crashes and high prior, uh, highest priority bugs. Uh, verify, yeah, like different information about QA. Then we have this chart, which were similar to the one I used at the beginning of this presentation, progressions. So you, you get an estimation of what's going on in the project. And that's, well, this, is, this information is done automatically, right, well, automatically with a script. But then we have this one here, which is um, quite interesting. Because, uh, well, I think it's been, um, a topic for quite some time that we wanted to have a place to gather all information about what's going on in development uh, and well in this case development and QA. So if you are not really following Git or what's going on in the repository then you can just come here and see what's going on in the project. Like I don't know like scan support like things that are going on in master. So yeah, it's kind of uh, <laughs> for like human way of uh, knowing what's going on. So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for, yeah, thank you for attending. And uh, do you have any question? Yeah? But you mean if the bug is reopened? No, if, the bug, if, if somebody finds a bug and then a year later the bug is still there, but there's been no activity. Yeah. yeah, so what we do now is, uh, okay, so someone reports a bug, then um, we request, if we need to, some information, we just put it in need info. So after six months, if uh, we don't get any reply from the reporter, we just send a reminder that, okay, this bug is going to be moved to insufficient, to, to resol resolve insufficient data uh, in a month. So if we don't get uh, that, re that response, then we just close it. So they don't remain open forever or in unconfirmed or whatever. Oh, a lot of questions. <laughs> Uh, year ago, and nothing happens. Yeah, but then, yeah, that's because the bug is set to new, but then nothing happened within a year, so then we just send a reminder. So the reminder is, um, well, what is try, trying to, uh, well, the reporter to, to test that, to, to retest that bug. But yeah, sometimes we don't get, that's what you mean, this long reminder that we send. Why not, uh, why not simply close it then? When yeah, but, uh, for, uh, yeah, but the, the, the bug was confirmed in the past, so someone needs to retest it in order to close it. We cannot close it automatically because then uh, we are losing information. Those, I mean, if, we, if you retest those bugs and they are still reproducible in master, I mean, if we just close them automatically, then we just close in a, a bug incorrectly because it's still reproducible. So that's why we, we ask for input from a third person or the reporter or whoever who can uh, retest it just to, to make sure it's still reproducible or not. So you, you have this uh, uh, chart with the uh, regressions. Yeah. 